Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Kyle Poorman, and I'm here with um, Dr. Dirk Meyer, and we're both with the Iowa Grain Quality Initiative, bringing you another podcast. And I'm, I'm very excited because we're talking about um, uh, a grain aeration storage app um, that's currently just been released. Um, and um, I, first of all, I'd just like to ask Dr. Meyer just a little bit more to give us a little bit of information about this new and exciting app um, uh, for us. Yeah, Kyle, uh, thank you uh, very much. And yes, I am uh, thrilled that we can introduce this uh, new app. Uh, this is an app uh, that I've been wanting to have available for quite a number of years that allows us to take things that we typically uh, have in charts and in tables and in fact sheets uh, available with regard to how do we predict uh, the cooling aeration of grain as a function of um, airflow rates and temperatures uh, in grain storage bins, whether it's on the farm or at the commercial grain facilities. Uh, how could we use uh, weather forecasting to identify what are suitable hours uh, during which we can aerate uh, without necessarily depending on an automated uh, system? And uh, how can we you know, uh, uh, look at uh, the equilibrium moisture content that grain will equilibrate to as a function of the air conditions that are out there? And so that's really the, the key aspects that this app uh, brings together uh, on a smartphone. Oh, that's, that's, that's excellent. So, so it's available on a smartphone, and uh, right now it's available on Android uh, through the Google Play Store. Is that right? That is correct. At this point in time, it's available uh, on and for Android phones only, yes. Okay, great. And, and, and just, you've wanted it for a long time, but, but tell us a little bit more about who developed it uh, and uh, why. Well, I, I want to give credit to one of my former uh, PhD students who is now a research scientist in Argentina with INTA, which is the equivalent of the Agriculture Research Service in Argentina. And uh, together with him, we developed the tool and hired a programmer that then uh, basically programmed all the equations and aspects that are required uh, to bring together in this app the types of things that uh, usually would have to be done with hand calculations or spreadsheets or computer programs. Oh, great. Well, that's a, a partnership across across continents, but uh, students, uh, former students, it's really, really great story. Um, and now let's, let's get a, down into a little bit of the nitty gritty. Who is the market for the app or who should be using the app? Um, well, yeah, anybody that is storing uh, grain and that is managing grain uh, after harvest and throughout the marketing year, uh, that of course includes uh, farmers, that includes grain elevators, it can include grain processing facilities that are storing grain. And the beauty of it is that this is globally applicable, right? It doesn't matter where you are in the world, uh, you can literally put in your location where you are and, and I've done that when I've traveled around the world and, and basically drawn in the weather forecast of a local, you know, of a local uh, or a locality where I've been in the middle of Africa and mm -hmm. been able to take a look at what the weather forecast would give me with regard to cooling grain or not. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, when we were talking earlier, you were you were you were kind of saying that, you know, so so. Basically, tell me how is this app going to help people out? Then you know we've you, you've told us about who should use it. So how is it going to help them? Uh, basically, how, well, the what are they going to gain from it? Go ahead. Sorry. Right. The, the the primary thing is it gives uh, it gives them intelligence into their hands with regard to managing grain. For example, we can predict based on the weather forecast whether over the next few days, uh, six to ten days, depending on the weather database you know, whether we have suitable weather to continue cooling grain after harvest. And we just, for example, in central Iowa have cooled off after some relatively warm weather that uh, caused a lot of drying of the corn in the field as well as of uh, soybeans. And so a lot of grain is in storage bins right now, relatively warm, right? And so if we have started 
cooling that grain, we want to avoid warming it back up because we know that uh, sometime later this week we'll have some warmer days or hours again. And that's just the way the fall weather goes, right? And mm -hmm. so here we can basically shave off hours that would cost us electricity, which means it would cost us money where we would be warming grain back up. Uh, and then we have to cool it back off, which essentially uh, extends uh, the number of hours that I have to actually operate a fan. And again, when you think about the horsepower involved, the kilowatt hours involved, uh, that adds up over time. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, you know, on our screen right now, we're showing the app in real time. And so Dr. Meyer has uh, agreed to kind of walk us through actually how it works. Uh, so okay. if you could give us a demonstration, Dr. Meyer, that would be, and, and I'll, I'll ask some questions or interject, but, uh, but in this case, he's going to walk us through the app. It's on the screen right now. It's really exciting, actually. So. Right, and we'll start with the simplest aspect here, which is the air-grain moisture relationship. And what that allows us to do, it allows us to calculate what the equilibrium moisture content of grain would be. And of course, here it has a whole list of all the major grains uh, and from you know soybean, sunflower, wheat, and everything. So we just have to click on the on the uh, on the button you know that we are interested in, and that in this case is is corn. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in in this particular example, uh, I'm looking at the five-year average weather conditions here in Des Moines in the month of October. Is uh, five-year average is 54 degrees. Five-year average is 71 percent relative humidity. And so if, if I wanted to know what the results of that is, I just click on the results button on the bottom here, and it will tell me that based on the October monthly average over the last five years of weather data, uh, corn under aeration would equilibrate to about 14.7 percent moisture content, right? Which is close to the market moisture content of 15 percent. And again, it, it, it just gives us an estimate uh, of, of uh, uh, what we want to do. And of course, if I said, okay, if the relative humidity, for example, was drier than 71, so let's bring it down to uh, 50%, right? Uh, we could say, oh, okay, at the same temperature when the relative humidity is lower, uh, that corn would over dry or shrink to about 11.85%. So this is a very nice reference tool to the question of will grain increase in moisture content or decrease in moisture content as a function of being exposed to air conditions. So that's the simplest application. And, uh, uh, and then it also, and this is interesting for people also in uh, periods where we have uh, uh, storage questions into the summertime, for example, you know, where we say, hey, you know, when the temperature is 54 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, is it safe? What is the safe storage moisture content? And in this case, it would be, you know, 14% moisture content, you know, for the long term. So these are very simple uh, tools right there in the app that otherwise in the past had not been available. Excellent. Uh, so um, should we get into something more, uh, something that's kind of how, how people can predict turning on and off their fan? Uh, yeah, I, so, uh, yeah. okay. So let's take a look at the Eurasian weather forecast portion here. And I have Des Moines programmed here. I can literally go in here and uh, you know, uh, put the town in here that, that I'm looking for. So if, for example, again, I'm, I'm typing in uh, Des Moines uh, and uh, hit enter and uh, hit this button, it will, you know, here on the right-hand side, it will retrieve the weather conditions currently in Des Moines, uh, which would put the temperatures on average you know, on uh, uh, 40 degrees uh, and 40 degrees, just because that's the current weather forecast. But again, if I'm looking at you know, where my typical conditions are, I know that you know, I've said earlier we're at about you know, 54, 55 degrees average five-year weather data uh, in general. And I, if I say the temperature minimum, I'll just leave that, for example, here at 40 degrees. And, uh, as, and now if I click on the results button, it should give me the next six days of weather forecast. And so looking at that basically says in the top there, hey, limit aeration temperature, this could be a thermostat setting on a fan, right? But I can basically say, we would only want to aerate uh, whenever the weather conditions are cooler than 54 degrees Fahrenheit. 
And it would say over the next six days, day 20, which is today, the 20th of October through the 25th of October, we would have about 122 hours out of six days, 144 hours, almost 90% of good quality air available to run our aeration fans. And you can see that for the 20th, I have basically 24 hours a day today to run the aeration fan. But if I click on the 22nd, you know, it opens up the 22nd and I can see, wow, on the 22nd, I have only about half of the day, 12 hours, because at midnight uh, and, and you know, into the daytime, early morning, there's going to be relatively cool weather conditions. But later in the day, it's going to warm up. And in the red zone, it basically says, you know, turn the fans off because otherwise you'd be warming this grain up that you're trying to cool at you know, below 54 degrees. And this is one of those saving electricity and, and, and hours time, uh, turning the fans off for a few hours into the next day and then turning it back on that will give us this recommendation. And uh, a, 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 a stored grain manager, a farmer could literally based on this weather forecast, go on and turn their fans on and off. And you know, in the future, this can be connected to a, a smart switch, right? Like you know, Alexa, mm -hmm. turn on the fan, Alexa, turn off the fan, so to speak. That's the possibility that we're moving toward. So, so basically what you're saying is that by turning on and off, you're saving yourself money and energy costs, but you're also keeping your grain at a, at a better quality because you're not heating it up and cooling yes. it down. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And without such a tool, you know, our traditional recommendation is, hey, once you turn the fan on in the fall, just keep the fan going, move that aeration fund through. Don't worry about it, you know, warming up and cooling off because if we begin to make those kinds of recommendations, uh, individuals typically kind of hunt around and, and guess, you know, when to turn things on or off and may forget to turn it back on. But again, with this app, if you look at it on a regular basis, because every day you could update the weather forecast, you can kind of say, hey, you know what? On the, on the 22nd and the 23rd, so that would be uh, Thursday, Friday, right? We know that uh, in the afternoon, into the evening, into the next morning, there's about a 12 hour period or so when there's a warming front coming through Des Moines, supposedly, right? We'll turn that fan off for 12 hours. So in the afternoon, two o'clock, I'll turn it off. And the next morning at eight o'clock or nine o'clock or 10 o'clock, I turn it back on. And then we're basically running again into the weekend. And all we did was, was cutting 12 to 14 hours off, uh, uh, during which we would have significantly warmed up the grain. And so this is one of the things that we avoid with this type of a tool that again shows that overall, you know, out of the six days, there is four of them that the fan will run continuously and two of them where it would only run about half of the day and, and it would cause warming up of the grain if we let the fans run. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're, you're, you're kind of taking some complex, um, some complexity and really um, simplifying it for the user in the app um, and giving them a lot more options um, to handle their grain uh, to save them money. So, wow. Absolutely, absolutely, and 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 basically uh, apply some intelligence that readily is available via their smartphone to do uh, additional decision making to optimize the cooling and the quality preservation of their grain. Great, and you you said that the future could be a plug and play or sm smart switch. Um, is that are we close to that? <laughs> well, yes, we, we are close to that. As a matter of fact, you know, there is there are some companies that are that have that type of technology available, uh, you know, already for this fall harvest season uh, and are working with similar types of tools and similar intelligence to begin to to uh, in, invoke that. And uh, so that'll be exciting to see over the near future how that evolves you know we're collaborating on some of that research uh, but we also want to make sure with this tool that uh, this is publicly available yep. for free anybody can yeah. access it anybody can download it uh, mm -hmm. and anybody can utilize it uh, for their purposes while anything else that we're talking about is of course something that you'd have to work with a company that supplies the equipment and their own software app which has very similar features as what we're talking about you know to then function you know function well 
and I'm sure and confident it'll be worth you know that automation step because it's a it's literally a much much less expensive way of doing store grain uh, management. And here is a great start with this uh, free tool. Yeah, that's, I mean the tool is really giving the users um, information in a way that they can then utilize in their operations uh, smartly. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, something that Absolutely. they they are they may not be doing now, but could really easily do with just this tool. Exactly. Um, go ahead. Yeah, and, th and this you know, and this this goes beyond the current aeration, the, the current fall harvest season, because of course we always recommend to cool grain and keep it cold through the storage time into the spring and so forth. And you can use this tool to say, hey, if in the winter time I want to freshen up my grain, want to run the fans for a few hours to make sure that the quality of my grain is good, that I don't have any spoilage, any mold development, any sweating. You know, I can again look at the weather forecast over the next few days and say, oh yeah, you know, next two, three days would be a great period of time to aerate, you know, cold grain in the winter time, keep it cold, keep it fresh. Uh, combine that perhaps with a CO2 monitor to check, you know, that everything is stable. And, and so this extends well into uh, the, the storage period and is not just an effective tool for the current uh, uh, storage, uh, for the current fall cool down period. Right. And, and I, I, you know, uh, this may not be of, of, but there are other grains as well in this. Um, so Absolutely. I, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, for example, here is uh, you know the third tool with regard to that. Again, we're talking about Des Moines, and if okay. I was to look at this and wanted to take a look at soybeans, which of course is also a very uh, important crop uh, uh, around here, uh, I would I basically would say, hey, you know, if I have soybeans right now that are very dry, you know, we heard of people harvesting soybeans at uh, let's say 11 percent, you know, moisture content. And if my target moisture content, however, was 13%, because that's the marketing moisture content, right? Mm -hmm. And I'd say, hey, uh, if my, if we say, hey, the, uh, the grain has cooled to, let's say, uh, 54 degrees now, because that was the average that we currently have, right? And my air temperature, right now in Des Moines here, we're at about, oh, what are we are about 35 degrees or so, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I can adjust this here a little bit. My air relative humidity, you know, it's, it's relatively high. So now we have this airflow rate of 0.1 CFM per bushel, which is a typical aeration airflow rate. This would tell us where those soybeans would equilibrate to over time. So when I click on results, it would say, hey, you know, the grain moisture content would equilibrate to like 19%, right? If I aerated soybeans right now, uh, the 10 or 11% soybeans would equilibrate towards 19%. Well, that would be a substantial rewetting process. Uh, I could get towards 13%, but I would be putting a lot of humidity into that grain at very low temperatures. And, but the air conditions are also somewhat unsuitable. And, uh, but how, however, there would be a substantial cooling taking place because the soybeans would cool from 54 degrees towards the 35 or 36 degrees that I had put in there. And uh, the cooling cycle would be something like 165 hours in order to cool this and achieve this, although the moisture equilibration would take much longer. So this is an additional evaluation for mm. the different grain types that you may have as to where we are, you know, with soybeans that are overly dry or with corn that's still wet uh, as to where we want to get to. Mm. Mm. Yeah, this, this would be very, could be very helpful. Um, yeah, for for people in their operations, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, let me just show you one other aspect. And when you look at the bottom, it shows settings. If we click on settings, you know, you can see that uh, we have actually four languages in here, which is not difficult to do between English, Spanish, French, and Portuguese, because uh, nice. of our collaborators. We have either the British system or the metric system. So internationally speaking, you know, the app of course can be used. Yeah. And we can turn on the GPS for town. I have it turned off so that I can put in, you know, different uh, locations. But if I turn the GPS coordinates on and I'll go back to parameters, uh, it should be searching town and find the fact that I'm located in Ames right now. All right. And yeah. so it brings yeah, up that's... the Ames weather data. So it automatically draws from the closest weather data and brings in the information from that. 
uh, and then it, it would do that in every one of those sub apps uh, versus, you know, trying to uh, put in a town wherever you want. You know, I can sit here and turn the GPS off and look at what the weather conditions are forecasting in northwest Iowa or in southeast Iowa or here in central Iowa in different locations for people, which can be very handy for farmers that are operating multiple locations or particular elevators that have mm -hmm. locations scattered all across the state and different things like that. Gives you a lot of flexibility. Yeah, I think uh, the flexibility to have the GPS, right? Because in in, in rural areas, um, with the with the um, weather the the weather app being functional for exactly where they're at, mm -hmm. um, but also to be able to turn that off and to to look around at your your different operations, uh, that's great. And also the you know the ability to have this app be used not only here in the United States, but in Argentina, Brazil, um, basically all around the world in Africa. It's a, it's a really functional app um, for not just corn and soybean uh, producers and farmers here, but, uh, but all around the world. Um, but right now our audience is, is you know, grain quality in, in the US, but, but it could be used much, much further afield. Um, that's 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 excellent. Again, the the app's name is the Grain Aeration Storage app. It's on the Google Play Store for Android phones. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add, Dr. Meyer? No, uh, except to say that you know, as people uh, use the tool and they have questions or feedback and so forth, you know, we were more than happy to. Uh, respond uh, to that uh, because we always want to make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, but you know, we have basically incorporated into this app a lot of the things and refinements that I had hoped to uh, achieve. Uh, but uh, you know, there's always somebody that will find or have another idea, and we'd be glad to hear that. So yes, tell oh, us, give us feedback. Excellent, excellent, and it's a, it's available now and it's free. Um, so. You, you can't argue with that. So that's that's correct. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Meyer. Um, and um, I hope everyone goes out and gets the, if, if you need it, gets the app. Thank you.